Yes, it is. Good afternoon and welcome to everyone to our Friday 12 p.m. prayer session. We want to thank God that he has spared our lives to see another preparation day. And doesn't our hearts thrill within us when we know that we only have a few hours left to go and spend the time with the Lord in the Sabbath hours? But can you imagine the privilege when we will face to face behold our Saviour and our Father and all the saints in glory, where we will not have any more darkness like we have in the winter in, in the UK, so the winter comes in very early, or the cold, but the, the Lord will be the light of our salvation. So at this time, I'm going to ask for um, Sister Rosemary to pray as we begin our session. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, our Father, not their Father, but not his Father, but our Father, who art in heaven, the Father of all nations, all tribes and languages. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for protection. Thank you for love. Thank you for this opportunity to allow us to gather together to lift up your name high and to lift one another to you, that you are God to be worshipped. As today is a preparation day, may you prepare our hearts for heaven's sake. As we are saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, if you drink or you eat, do it for the glory of the Lord. As we pray, as we are kneeling down now, we are doing it for the glory of the Lord. May you glorify us, Lord. May we hear the, your speaker now, your child will speak among us just now. And bless her, Lord, or bless him. Let us all listen and obey and be the hearers and the doers of the word. Bless us with our families, our relatives, our friends, and our neighbors, our children, our in-laws, everybody to be blessed through our presence. Let us be the light of in, in the families, in the neighbors, in the community. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Let us hear the Holy Spirit whispering in our lives and let us give it place to work with us. Because without you, we are nothing. But with you, we are sons and daughters of heaven. Bless Sister Sharon. Sister Stolle, Sister Rani, Sister Mkave, Sister Cletus, and all the sisters who are here, Lord. Bless me too with our families. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Rosemary, for praying such a beautiful prayer and for lifting each one of us up before our Father. At this time, um, I'm stepping in the gap. Brother Tabood indeed needs our prayers because he was meant to speak this afternoon and he contacted me with a very sore throat. So as we are um, going to go into a prayer session later on, let's just remember him, um, God's servant in prayer. At this time, I would like us to open our Bibles to Matthew 25. Matthew 25, and I would like us to read, and I would like a reader to read for me, verses 31 down to verses um, ooh, 40. Matthew 25, 31 to 40. Thank and you. And he reads from King James Version. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. 
Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was and hungered, and he gave me meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in. Naked, and he clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of these least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Rani, for reading the word of God so beautifully. So today I want to share with you a reading. Um, it was a reading that I came across by one of our pioneers, um, E.J. Wagner. And, um, you know, when we've got so much literature, wholesome literature to read, it is a sin when we find ourselves reading unconsecrated readers, when we have so much abundance of wealth of knowledge that will edify our spirits. And so I'm reading from one of his writings and it's based on the good shepherd and it's, it comes from a, a, a book called the present truth and it was written in march 12 1896 and it reads john 10 verse 11 i am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep let us pray most gracious father i thank you lord for the opportunity to stand in the presence of the most high god and to be the servant of the most high god cleanse me of my sinful ways take away anything that will inhibit the word of god being shared to your children this afternoon Sanctify us by your truth, blot out our transgression, and fill us with your Lord, your spirit, your spirit of wisdom, your spirit of truth. Make us hunger for holiness, we pray. And as the words are heard by each hearer, may the words be blessed of those who hear the word of the Lord, O oh God, and that we will do the biddings of the Lord, and it will be the amens of the Lord, because we are doing your will. So Lord, hear our prayers. Hear the prayers of this daughter of yours, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So yesterday I was reading um, Matthew 25 um, with a group of non-Aventist Christians. We, we are studying the book of Matthew. And, uh, and, you know, as I was reading it, I was shook to the core. Because, you know, what? there's certain scriptures we hear like, like a song. We hear it all the time. And if we're not careful, we will miss present truths in these scriptures. And so I'm going to share with you and expound on the reading as well. This writing from E.J. Wagner. It says... Christ occupies a multitude of relationships to his people. He is the everlasting father, yet he is our brother. So he is not only the good shepherd, but he's also the door into the shepherd's fold and even the fold itself. Every good thing is found in him. Amen. So what it's saying to us, my brothers and sisters, is that God is our all in all. He has so many faculties, so many ways that he wants to interact with us. 
And so one of the faculties or one of the relationships that he has with us is of the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He gives it not in vain, as it, it is indicated by the parable in Luke 15 verses 3 to 7. And can I just get someone just to open their Bible and just to read those verses of Luke 15 verses 3 to 7. Luke 15 verses 3 to 7. When you find it, just unmute yourself. Thank Luke you. Luke 15, 3 to 7. Yes. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he has found it, he laid it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me. For I found my sheep, which was lost. Seven as well? Yes, please. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Amen. 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 And you know, when you read this scripture, I want you to listen to verse seven. It says, the part it says rejoice and for well, i have found my lost sheep my sheep which was lost i say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 just people which need no repentance guys we are that lost sinner because there is hardly a moment that we can even be classified as being one of the, the 99 just persons. Not at this point in our lives, because we're constantly having to check ourselves in by the word of God, because every time we take a breath of consciousness, where we have to keep our thoughts and our imaginations under the control of the Holy Spirit. Without it, we are sinners in constant need of being forgiven and constant need of coming before God and repenting. Now, what am I saying? I'm not going to say to you that God is not going to come for a holy people. No, because there's going to have to come a time when God's grace is sufficient for all of us, where we will put away that the constant propensity of falling into those same sinful habits. And we're going to say to, to these habits, none of these things have moved me because God is on the throne of our hearts. We will look at the sacrifice of the good shepherd and value it to that point that we would do anything to, to ensure that we will not bring the good shepherd any harm. I will read, this teaches that the lost sheep will certainly be found, which means that God's people will be saved, for his sheep are his people. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Psalms 95 verses 6 and 7. When the heathen Canaanitish woman besought Jesus to heal her daughter, he said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yet he listened to her prayer and healed her daughter, thus showing that poor Gentile was one of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She was one whom he came to save. Further assurance is found in these words of Christ, 
all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should not, I should lose nothing, but should rise up again at the last day. John 6, 30, 30, 37 to 39. He will therefore surely find all of his own, and he will keep all that he finds. For he has said, Father, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. Surely then, the little flock need no fear, not fear, sorry, even though Satan does go about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. What a beautiful assurance that Christ is not even leaving us in his hands, but he is leaving us in his father's hands. And no man, not even Satan, can pluck his little flock out of his father's hand and that's an assurance that if we have children and loved ones family members brothers and sisters in Christ who for whatever reason have left the faith we know that that wayward sheep when the father when the son calls them and the father assures them when they come home, nothing will pluck them out of his hands. Amen. But the Lord said, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. John 10 verse 16. Some people quote this text to justify the numerous divisions in the professed church of Christ, but they certainly do not read it thoughtfully. It is true the Lord has other sheep, sheep that are wandering in the desert, and they are even in the jaws of the lion, but he will gather them for his mission is to the lost, and then there will be one fold and one shepherd. Unity is the perfection of God's plan. His desire for his people is that they are all made to be one. It is only in the unity of the faith that they can come unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4, verses 13. There is but one fold, although the sheep are scattered in many places. The church is the body of Christ, and there is only one body, one spirit, even as we are called in, in one hope for your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. When we are unified in the faith of Jesus Christ, 
you know people want to know what is the faith of jesus christ it is when we are unified in the, that very manner of being one body one spirit one hope one lord one father one baptism one faith one above all through it all and in you all that is the purpose of the faith of Jesus Christ. Are all not men on the earth the lost sheep of Israel? No, for not all the sheep are to be saved, but few men will be saved compared with the multitude that have lived on the earth. At the last day, Mankind will be found divided into two classes, the sheep and the goats, and they will be separated, the one from the other. So as I spoke about at the, the beginning, our Jesus comes to us in so many different relationships, but the one that we're talking about this afternoon is as the shepherd. So Jesus is shepherding a flock of sheep, but he's also shepherding a flock of goats. All are experiencing the sacrificial love of Jesus. All are experiencing the blessings that come you every morning, great is our faith, your faithfulness, Lord, unto us. But some are not reforming. Some have got a hardened heart. So when a, the doctrine of God's kingdom comes before them, they will say, yeah, but. There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the way thereof is death. And so these, these dissenters of the truth of God, instead of following the lead of the good shepherd, despite the loving watch care, will become so hardened and resistant that in the last days, there will only be two, two groups, the sheep and the goats. There is no sitting on the fence because by your actions, you bear witness of the spirit which is within you. So if you are, you know, professing to be the child of God, then you will be the obedient sheep. But if you are constantly kicking against the prick and saying but and bringing your own reasonings instead of following the unctions of the spirit, there will be a time where the good shepherd will then come as a king of kings and lord of lords. And he will then give his just rewards. And we hear that he will separate them from the sh as the sheep, the goats. And it says, and he set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, he blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. No afterthoughts, guys, from the foundation of this world, from the exception of when he said, let there be light. There has been a kingdom prepared for God's people. Then shall he say unto them on the left, depart from me. Be cursed unto everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angel. So this was not the reward that he wished to give. The only group of people, the only group of um, individuals that were meant to go into everlasting fire was devil and his angels. But there is a group, we call them the goats, the butts, that will 
receive a reward from the hand of the king because they choose not to follow. People might say then, did not Christ die for all? Most certainly, for the scriptures so declare. He did not divide mankind into two classes, sheep and goat for, for himself. Men themselves made that division by making a decision. The Lord only separates those two classes when he comes. So I want you to get this. The two classes, the sheep and the goats, were not made by Christ. It was a division made by men, by the choices that men make on a daily basis. Each individual has it only in his own power to decide in which of the two classes he will be. A very few words more will show you how this is. This is what um, E.J. Wagner is saying. Read these verses in the 10th chapter of John, verses 4. It says, and when he put forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Other sheep I, I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. There you have the whole story. Anyone who hears the voice of Jesus and follows him is his sheep. To hear is to obey. The word of God is the test. He who, when it comes to them, rejects it in whole or in part or straightway begins to contradict it or to attempt to pervert it from its plain sense or to excuse themselves for not obeying it are marking themselves as G-O-A-T-S, goats. The sheep hears the voice and follow it no matter where they are, no, not nor how wholly lost they are, if they hear indeed, then they are sheep, and their and their salvation is as sure as God's existence. Isaiah fifty five verse three says, "Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul." shall live. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Today, my brothers and sisters, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if he will hear his voice, Pardon not your hearts. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings and understanding to the reading of his words. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So, guys, as I, as, I, as I said, I studied the book of Matthew yesterday and then I found this reading. And I was rebuked, torn, but I was also impressed to, I said, you know, I wasn't expecting to share it so quickly, but God has made provision for me to share. I don't know if anyone's got any comments on the reading. Please feel free to unmute. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful word that you brought us this afternoon. And uh, and the 
knowledge to say that the Lord is coming. He's coming to take his sheep. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 And you know, it, I think the, the shaking part was for me was that God doesn't create these groups. We create it ourselves by our choices of either hearing and obeying or disobeying. Sister Mugabe, what's your favorite saying that you normally say? Are you there, Sister Mugabe? What's your saying? I was muted. <laughs> Randy said, always say, obey and live, disobey, we perish. That's it. <laughs> That is that is the basics, the basis of the two. Thank groups. you very much, Sister Sharon. Mm -hmm. As you, you were reading, it's our choice to go to the left or to the right. Mm -hmm. And there are groups like the tears are at the left, the sheep at the left, the, the, the foolish girls at the left. But if we obey, we'll be always at the right. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Mugabe. Sister Sitol, I noticed your, you were unmuted. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, um, ladies and ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Sister Sharon, for that um, reminder. Uh, uh, what an apt message for the preparation day. When you hear his voice, harden not your heart. May we be prepared to hear his voice and to make the choice that will put us on the on the right instead of on the left. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. I don't know if there's any other person that wants to um, respond to the reading. Hi, uh, Sister Sharon, can I? Can I yes, you say? may. Yeah, please do. Yeah. <laughs> As you were speaking there, this is the song that came to my mind. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. 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 I, I had the lyrics of this song, Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, master today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold over my being, absolute sway. Filled with thy Holy Spirit, Lord, till all can see Christ only always living. In me, may this be the prayer of our hearts today. Can I have someone please to pray for the message if there is no more comments to be made? I'll pray. Thank you, Sister Sintol. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, may your kingdom come. Lord, we are all gathered here this afternoon because we desire to become the lambs that are going to be on the right, to be 
like the wise virgins that he had, that he that chose to have sufficient um oil in their lamps. Thank you for the maid seven sharing this reminder for us to open our hearts and allow your word to change us into into your likeness to and to seek the Holy Spirit to help us to allow to help us to, to allow him to change us into your likeness too. Thank you for my sisters who have chosen to come and listen to your word. And as we are going to continue into the season of prayer, Lord, and into your holy holy day, prepare our hearts, open our hearts to allow the Spirit to help us to hear with the ears of, of Christ and to embrace your word with the affections of our hearts and to allow it, most importantly, to be the master by whose rules we, we choose to live and to also take the word not to sit with it but to take it to those who may not know you or who are like the lost sheep we have turned away from you thank you father for this time of uh, this sweet hour of prayer bless sister sharon and increase her ministry and increase the uh, work, the, the ministry of this platform, Lord, thank you that we are able to hear one another. And for for those that are going to listen, may they they to be edified when they listen to this to this message. Thank you, Father, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, who I am inviting to stay with us, not just now, not just tomorrow, but throughout the ages until you come to fetch your own home and may you find us, all of us in our families, ready to welcome the King. This is my prayer in the precious name of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We are going to go into a season of prayer and the first one is praise and thanksgiving. Do I have anyone that will do the praise and thanksgiving? The scripture yes. is Thank you. Scripture is for uh, Philippians 4 verse 6. Um, yeah. My praise and thanksgiving is that yesterday we went for my youngest child's graduation. Now, I, I don't do the formality of graduations, but I, I had to respect the fact that she wanted to go through the, 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 the whole thing. But it just shows me that, you know, the, the number of graduates that they had was about 300. And I said, you know what, God is so merciful because these graduates were, um, they were studying in the midst of the greatest turmoil that we have experienced this, this, um, this century. We had lockdown, we had COVID and the, the whole thing that went through the world. And yet these, these um, young people managed to get an education, you know, be it the world education, um, to come out of the system with a, a sound mind, but also despite the fact there's so much going on in the world, st they still have a hope in the future. And, you know, I, 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 was, I sat there and I prayed for all of them that went up there, but God will also reveal his will for their lives as well. You know, he's given them that opportunity to go through these things they don't seem to realize but i pray that they also will come face to face with their savior before he comes in the cloud so that was my thanksgiving that god has just so blessed my household in that way um i will do the prayer of confession and repentance can i do a, a thanksgiving as well please I yes go ahead sister rami um for some months me and some of my uh, prayer partners, we were praying and my uh, women of faith were also praying for me and for my church. And there's one person, a white man, always an elder of the church, a bit arrogant. And then I was praying for him 
the female pastor for the church and the Wells mission president, praying for them that somehow, somewhere, the Lord will touch their hearts. And lo and behold, when the recommendation committee met last month and the nominating committee was nominated, somebody objected to it saying that the there is more of racial colored people in the nominating committee than the whites. And we had to sit again and, and do the uh, nominating committee again. And it, it was painful, but we continued to pray. Yesterday, when we sit for the nominating committee, I was praying to the Lord all day that I've never sat in a nominating committee. Why have you brought me there? And I have been praying and I said to the Lord that this man should never be an elder again in the church. And I said, Lord, do I have to speak? Do I have to open my mouth? What do I do? Do I stand for the principles? And when we sat at the table and prayer was made, and when they were asked, let us go and first see who can be the elders, one of the people took his first name and a white man said what was in my heart. Wow. I tell you, there's a God in heaven. When Amen. we pray, he answers, he hears, he loves us all. And he knows that his church is being misled. And there was pin drop silence. And when he, he, he stopped speaking, I said, I second what this person has just said. Amen. He cannot be an elder in the church. And everybody just looked at each other and they said, well, then we have to drop him. And you I know, want to thank the Lord. Yeah, I, just I want praise to God. Him. I praise God. Because you know what? It's not about, you know, um, our ethnicity. Our ethnicity. It is about the truth of the time, the present truth. What the little flock needs is present truth. And they are starving and they are being scattered for the lack of present truth. So I rejoice with you and those within your conference that the Lord is king and he will not ignore the prayers of his people. You may not, you may have waited longer than 10 days or 21 days as um, Daniel had to wait but God indeed heard the prayers of his children and he will bring present truth to his little flock and yes it will cause a shaking but those who have an ear will need to hear what God is saying to his last day church amen Amen. At this time, can I have someone to do the prayer for um, the Holy Spirit? This is what we so need because our propensity for sin, our, our irreverence, our, 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 our devisory ways is caused by the fact that we are not governed by the Spirit of God. So can we have someone to do that one, please? I will. Okay, that is Isaiah 44, verses 3. And finally, prayer for prayer retreat. We have a um, pending camp meeting in Wales in December. And we have speakers that are coming. And we would like God's um, um, power to be in control of every aspect of this program. And as well as those who are going out and doing the giving out of great controversy or witnessing within their different regions. So who will do that one, please? I will pray. Thank you, Sister Dorothy. That's Isaiah, um, sorry, that is 1 Corinthians 9, verse 22. And before we go into the prayer session, 
we are going to ask God to consecrate us and make us worthy intercessors and, and those that will stand in the gap for all of these areas that we are going to pray for. But most of all, to make us be obedient sheep to his voice. Let us pray. Hello, Sister Sharon. You said Isaiah White for Holy Spirit. Oh, sorry. Um, let me just pull it up in the chat. So for the Holy Spirit, it's Isaiah 44, verses 3. Thank for, you. Yeah, for praise and thanksgiving, it's Philippians 4, verse 6. And for prayer retreat, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 22. Let us pray. We're going to do a prayer of consecration for ourselves first. Amen. 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 I'm going to read Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, we give thanks. Let your request be known unto God. Amen. Yes. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. May only your will be done. This bed as it is in heaven. Matthew 18 20, your promise, as you said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. Thank you, Lord, for being in our midst. Thank you for the word. Thank you for using Sister Sharon. May you remember Elder Tabuda. Lord, just heal him wherever he is. Thank you. It's not easy. Preparation day, midday prayer then to come here. May you bless everyone who is here. It's a sacrifice. God bless everyone who is here. I just want to thank you to praise you for the prayer answered, oh Lord, of Sister Ranini and everyone who is here, even Sister Sharon, the graduation. Thank you for answering our prayers. May you fill us with the Holy Spirit as we are praying because we don't know how to pray. May the Holy Spirit fill all of us. In Jesus' name I pray. May you prepare our mind, heart, soul, and flesh to receive the Sabbath. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Um, scripture is going to be Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confess, sorry, confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Most gracious Father in heaven, we thank you that you are God and there is none like you. We thank you for grace, mercy and favour that the door of probation is still left ajar for each one of us. We place before you our hearts. We cannot give it, so please take it, Father. Our desire is to love you with all our hearts, but the flesh will not yield at times. The spirit of evil rises up within us. And Lord, we desecrate the name Christianity. We do not wear the name well. Forgive us and have mercy upon us. Those secret sins that we delight in, remove them from our, our lives, O oh God. Put enmity, a hatred between us and anything that is unlike you. So that when we stand, we know that we can stand in the truth of Jesus. That we are covered by the blood of the Lamb. And that we can experience a victory in Jesus, who is our saviour forever. We thank you, Lord, for purchasing us. Even when we did not know our true condition, you took us in our disgusting, naked selves. And you clothed us in the righteousness of your son. Lord, make our garments white. Take away even the tiny dross that will impair the glory of God in our lives. 
We ask, O oh God, that you will create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit. And that we will not serve you out of fear, but because of the love of God that constrains us, we will love you with all our hearts. And service will not come because we know it's the right to do but it is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our lives we ask you O oh God that as we enter towards the Sabbath hours that you will make us your people that value the Sabbath the Sabbath will be a delight that we will not take not even the fringes of the Sabbath but we will serve you in spirits because the spirit is inhabiting us and the truth of the word of god will be governing every aspect of our lives we bring each member of this prayer group before you we ask for the washing and rest restoration and placing each one of us on the rock jesus christ the firm foundation we ask for our families to go through this cleansing and purging and for the lost sheep of Israel Lord never tired to call them home whether they're across the world whether they are lost in our very household oh God have mercy restore redeem and reclaim we thank you, Lord, that that is the mandate of heaven. And we pray that you will help us, dear Father, to be living sacrifices, honourable and acceptable before our holy God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm reading in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 3. For the Holy Spirit... For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and flood upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Amen. Thank you for the reading of the word. Let us pray. Before we pray, I want to thank God because you have been praying for my son to get married. But financially, we did not have enough. But he have taken the first step to be in court. And they have gathered them together in court. But the wedding will be on the 24th of November, of December. Amen. I want to thank God and your prayers. Let us pray for the Holy Spirit is among us. Lord, we come before you as we are to say thank you for the gift of life because you are our father, the one who art in heaven, the one who created us, the one who loved us, who created us with your own image, with your own likeness. You are the God in good times and God in bad times. You are the father of all nations, all tribes and languages. As we gather every time this afternoon, today is a preparation day. May you prepare our hearts for seven, heavenly sake. May you comfort us where we need comfort, as you do. As we have pro, uh, pro, protected us in our mother's bodies, protect us again. Thank you for being with my son, Linon. Thank you for the first step he has taken. Thank you that even on the 24th of December, I'll be with them. Lord, I won't be there, but you'll be there for me. And the siblings will be there. And my, my sisters here who are praying with me, may you bless them all, Lord, in a very special way. As we pray, Lord, you, you answer our prayers because you love us. You loved us before creation. Lord, I bring each and everyone who is here to be blessed and those who did not have this opportunity. Be with them, Lord. Be with all the, the children we have, you have given us, with our relatives, our friends and neighbors. Lord, we have heard that 
you shall pour the Holy Spirit among us and unto our seed. Do it for heavenly sake, Lord. As we are saying in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. We know that you can add what is good and righteousness is upon you, Lord. May you bind us together with the heavenly belt of faith and keep us away from harm and danger. That you are the good shepherd who cares for the sheep and you have got the green pastures for, for us as your sheep. Thank you, Lord, for being our God and our Father. Bind us together and keep us away from harm and danger. And Lord, our cry is our, our names to be written to, in the book of life. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Sister Amen. Martha, thank you. Yeah. Prayer uh, for the prayer retreat. First uh, Corinthians 9 to 2. It says, To the weak I became weak that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this prayer retreat forum where we can come and hear words of life and grow, we pray that you continue to bless this ministry, that your name will be glorified. We thank you for the present truth that we hear every day and for all the presenters and all of the testimonies and everything that we, uh, we gain from this. And we just pray that you will continue to bless it. And Father, we have visitors who are coming to to uh, to present at the prayer retreat in December and we just bring these families to you all their arrangements to come here we pray that you make a way smooth for them that they may come and break your a bread of life to your children prepare us for the second coming of Jesus thank you father for your provision we pray that you will uh, provide um, in your own sweet way, every need of this ministry, not only this ministry, but also other ministries that are engaging in preaching the three angels' messages online and in person. Some are going from country to country, from churches to churches, especially Elder Thornton Puri is the one we are aware that he's engaging uh, in India. We pray that you will empower him with your Holy Spirit and that the work will go forward. Help us to hasten your coming by proclaiming the three angels' messages. Go with these powerful messages from every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. May prayer retreat members not be the least among those people who are going forward with the message, but impress upon our hearts that we will uh, surrender ourselves and give our all to the ministry so that you can come quickly and take us home. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for persevering in prayer.